One of our great African fathers, Kwame Nkrumah, once said, I am not African because I was born in Africa, but because Africa was born in me. Based on the latest United Nations estimates, Waldometer shows Africa's population to be 1.4 plus billion. Out of the 1.4 plus billion Africans, only a few can testify by their works that indeed Africa was born in them. In today's episode, we are delighted to bring you one of these Africans. But every time when I was in the bush for the five years with fellow young kids, meet Honorable Senator Monica Muchangwa, a Zimbabwean Minister of Women Affairs, Community, Small and Medium Enterprises Development. She is passionate about women empowerment and she has championed this cause throughout her career. I want to see empowered women because I know that when you empower a woman, you've empowered a nation. So I work hard, I love what I do, I love people as I say. Over the past two decades, Honorable Monica Muchangwa has held several women leadership positions, both locally and internationally. Join us to listen and learn from a strong-spirited woman veteran of the liberation struggle, Honorable Monica Muchangwa. One question should resound in your mind as you watch. Are you born African or Africa is born in you? Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it out because Africa needs you. Once again, let me welcome you to Channel 63, the network that looks at Africa and how we can make it the Africa we want by 2063. Today, we are privileged to be in the Republic of Zimbabwe, right here in Harare, and in the office of the Honorable Minister for Women Affairs and Community Development and so many other things that this incredible woman that I'm going to introduce to you is involved in with her team in this ministry. Let me start by asking you, what inspires you? And who is Honorable Monica Muchangwa? Uh, Monica Muchangwa is an ordinary, humble beginnings. I was born in the village. I grew up in a, in a very, not poor, but that was a middle sort of uh, for the Africans in our country before independence right. then. At least I had a working father. My father was a policeman in, this, uh, in Rhodesia. I'm the last born of eight children. Mm. Uh, so I benefited a lot because those who were educated and old, old, older than me managed to also support me when my father died. Unfortunately, I mm. lost my dad when I was 11 years. I was doing grade six. So I was brought up by a single parent, to say the truth. My mother was a disciplinarian. My mother was uh, a no-nonsense person, mm. loving, but uh, firm. Uh, we, and I am very grateful because when I left the country, not because I had not been given any, everything which a child should get from a mother, but because of that generation to liberate our country. I left this country hardly 15 years. I was at a boarding school in Chimane Mani. I'm from Manikaland province, as mm. you have said. Mm. Uh, it was uh, just uh, that uh, spirit when we all felt as young generation that what are we waiting for? Mozambique, Frelimo had just become independent. Mm. MPLA in uh, Angola had become independent. In 1976, there was a Soweto uprising. Mm. You know, the young generation were now joining the elder generation which had left earlier to go to the struggle. But because the numbers were lower, it was not really gaining momentum mm. as much as they mm. wanted to. So we, I left with the other girls uh, in a group of four girls for the struggle. That's a story for another day. Interesting. But uh, what inspires me, I love my country. Mm. I love the people. As you can see, I didn't fight for opportunities for myself. I didn't leave the school. I didn't leave school, my family, my mother, my brothers and sisters for any personal gain. I left for opportunities for the people of this country. Mm. 
So I work hard and always find an opportunity to handhold another person to help. I've uh, sent through a lot of uh, young children to school. I have uh, personally looked after my family's, uh, my family and my husband's family's uh, kinsmen, just make sure that they go to school, empower them. Uh, I want to see empowered women because I know that when you empower a woman, you've empowered a nation. So I work hard, I love what I do, I love people as I said, and that makes me wake up every day and, and not without any single day. Mm. I work seven, mm. seven mm. days in a week, that's it. I don't, I, there's no single day which I would say I've relaxed. I have a lot of uh, people I call friends, so I really don't have personal friends. Maybe my husband is my personal friend, but I have lots of friends. Uh, so that keeps me going. I love Africa. I've had an opportunity to work with a lot of Africans. Uh, during the struggle, as I was uh, traveling around, I went to Dar es Salaam, I met a lot of friends. And I've seen that Africans, they always there for each other. If it wasn't for African countries, we wouldn't have really gained our independence. We wouldn't have been able to come back. And I also am grateful to the Lord because just to be here to survive, a lot of lives were lost. I lived in the bush for five years and uh, it's by the grace of the Lord that I'm here. And uh, so I'm very grateful to the Lord up there. The Almighty continues to give me a lot of strength and I hope uh, by the time I leave this job, I would be able to uh, really hold the results. I like to see results. I like to really get them and they say, this is what I've done. Mm. So that's what is me and that's what inspires me. Interesting. I'm saying this because, I'm saying interesting because before I, we, we came to your office, as I mentioned earlier in our in prayer conversation, I've got some very good reports from very senior people, you know, ambassadors and what about you? And I'm not surprised the journey so far. Now, I, I would have asked a question, why fundraising for disadvantaged people? But listening to you, I think I don't need to ask that question. And why I wouldn't ask that question? Because in Africa, when you see political leaders doing charity and all of that, the assumption is that it's just to gain political power. But I don't want to believe that that is the motivation from what I've read and what you have told me. I must tell you that mm -hmm. uh, in the first uh, 30 years of in, after independence, right. I wasn't a politician. Right. Uh, yes, I went to the struggle. I got married. Uh, I found my husband in the struggle. He's mm. a war veteran like myself. Mm. I came back and... Did, I, did you meet in the bush? Yes, I, we met in the bush. Oh. But I thought in the so bush, that's why we there was nothing like love and, you know... Well, where people live. Mm. This was no... There was no uh, uh, deadlines to say the war starts this time and it will end that okay, time. Okay. I mean, you know, in Vietnam, yeah, yeah, that yeah, children yeah. were born during the war absolutely after it continued with the absolutely. war. Absolutely. So... I, I, I must say, even my firstborn son was mm. born in in Maputo, mm. in Mozambique. Oh, interesting. Uh, so when I came back, it was really an opportunity for me to go back to school. I told you I had left uh, when I was doing Form 3 mm. as a young girl. Mm. And so coming back, I had more responsibilities. I was somebody's wife, I was somebody's mother, somebody's mother-in-law. But at the same time, I wanted to improve myself. So right. I took a lot of time just going back to school. Mm. Uh, we were the first diplomats, so I did most of my education outside this country. We were the first, what we call ourselves pioneer diplomats for an independent mm. Zimbabwe. That was in 1980. Mm. We were both posted, uh, my husband was posted as counselor mm. to Belgium, mm. Brussels. Mm. And uh, I followed him naturally because I love marriage institution. Mm. I have uh, been very lucky to say the least, I have been very lucky to be a happy married woman. Wonderful. At the same time, a very busy woman and a very good mother. It doesn't come very easy. What it means is I have put in more than 24 seven. Wonderful. My day is not 24 hours. I see. So I have uh, personally told myself, it's a question of mindset. You can actually do it. You can love your family, you can love your husband, you can love your job, you can love your children, you can love your in-laws, you can love my sisters and brothers. Mm. Of course, it's a little bit more work. That's right. But I've done it. Yeah, I am well over 60 and uh, still going, I hope. 
with God. Interesting. Uh, we continue to work for the people. Interesting. So, so I am, um, uh, let me say, I'm a product of a very good mother uh, who disciplined me so much that even during the war, this was a guerrilla warfare where you didn't have a, a sister or a brother. Everybody was a mm. sister and a brother. Mm. And mm. we were almost the same mm. age. And mm. a few mm. who would look after us, mm. like uh, Mama Salim Mugabe. Right. She was right. my mother. We looked up to mm. her. Mm. I mean, this is the mother I knew. Because we, when you had a problem as a girl, this is where we used to go. Mm. I didn't have my own mother, mm. neither did I have a sister mm. or an aunt during the war. Interesting. So Ma Mama Sally did a lot of work. It's unbelievable. So you mean Ghana has done a lot for Zimbabwe then? Ghana <laughs> did a lot. For us to be where we are today, and uh, with all the respect which other people are giving us, right. I know somebody instilled Absolutely. that discipline in Absolutely. us. Absolutely. She Absolutely. was there as a mother. She taught us how to look after ourselves. Mm. She mm. taught us to be uh, to be disciplined, mm. to respect your own body. Mm. She was a true mother. Mm. And this is why I came back. And up That's to wonderful. now, I'm still married to the same man. These were some of the very good... Mm. Uh, the teachings of Mama Salim I lived with her. Interesting. Yeah. Honorable, yes. by the way, let me congratulate you uh, for how far you've come. 45 years in marriage. Yes. As a political leader. Yes. That's awesome. And I see, I see your photograph, your family photographs on the wall in office. Yes. Something that you don't normally see in most political leaders' office. Congratulations. But the question I'm asking is, Honorable, Aren't you concerned about the way our youth is going now with social media, get quick, get rich quick attitude, microwave mindset? They see you like this, they think that they should be like you overnight and stuff like that. Are you worried about these things? Oh, you already are saying what I was just about to say. To say I'm not worried or I'm not concerned about the young generation of today, uh, that will be an understatement. Mm. Uh, I am worried mm -hmm. because I think the way we were brought up, there was a lot of wisdom in our parents. Right. But we also have to understand cultures, traditions are dynamic. Absolutely. They move with the times. Absolutely. We can't blame economic development. That's what we fought for. We fought for opportunities True. for it. We didn't all grow up as, you know, when I was growing up in a family of nine, you can imagine it was just a question of children mm. go to the field. Children come and eat. Mm. Children go to school. But things have changed. Absolutely. Now we need time with our children. Mm. And with the parents which we are asking to have time with their children, mm. they are also fighting a lot of challenges, you know, to make ends meet. Mm. But we are saying the teachings should always remain. Mm. The good values, we should look back mm. and understand why our parents put certain values and principles mm. ahead of us. Mm. I think as parents, as mothers, and this I to do a lot when I speak to uh, young, mothers, young mothers, to say it's important to spend time with your child. Mm. It's important to ask yourself, what kind of a child do you want to bring up? Mm. Because it all starts from you. It also, children learn from coping. Mm. Children, we, in Shona, there's a saying I always say, we, we eat maize uh, porridge, mm. thick one. Mm. And you need to know the technique of cooking that sadza. It's called sadza. sadza. And uh, in other places they call it ugali. Ugali. I think that's in okay. uh, that it There's a technique so that there is, uh, it's smooth and it's nice and thick. And if you don't to have the right technique mm. to cook it, mm. it becomes... Uh, what we call in Shona Mboza. Mboza. And Mboza mean it's not well cooked. Cooked. And you can't really eat it. Mm. So I always say to my young women, the children we find in the streets, the children who are refusing to go to school, the children who are becoming women of the night, mm. the children who are taking substance and abuse, the children who have no values of respecting their parents, who are shouting at their parents, who are beating their parents, mm. somebody has made that ugali. Mm. So when you are making your ugali, learn the right things. Try, and I'm not blaming parents. Sure. 
But I'm just saying it starts from there. Absolutely. The best we can do as parents is to give the right values mm. and try to instill those values mm. in your child mm. so that when they grow up, they may do certain things out of influence, peer pressure, but there's one thing I know. A child will always have a memory of the teachings of their mother From and their father. Absolutely. So the home teachings will always carry children. Mm. I'm a product of my mother's teachings. Even in her absence, mm. I lived on my own. I could have really gone wild, become any, anybody. But every time when I was in the bush for the five years with fellow young kids, there are certain things which when they did, I would dare, I would dare never do it. Because mm. I, I would say to myself, something yeah. tells me Absolutely. at the Your back of my mind, of my mother would not approve of this. Even the work I do today, even the love for pulling others from poverty, even the love for making sure underprivileged people, I do help them. I saw my mom mm. doing that. Mm. We grew up in a home full of people, relatives. And those are the things I, and I see, I also even imparted those to my children. I've got four boys, they are now big men. Mm. And uh, some of them, each time I lived out of the country, when I was coming back for the family, I would bring bags and bags of uh, clothes to give my relatives back in the village. Do you know even my boys up to now, when they come back they from the overseas, thing. they do the same thing. So I really want to say, we need to go back to basics. Mm. As we bring up our children, mm. even when we talk about respect mm. of women, of when we talk about gender equality mm. issues, it's all those values need to be instilled as a child grows. Absolutely. I just came back from Rwanda, mm. and I must say they are doing a wonderful job. Mm. It's not surprising that they have 61% of women members of parliament. parliament yeah. It's not surprising that they cut across mm. all private yeah. and public sectors. It has been intentional. It, it is intentional. Yeah. It has to be deliberate. Absolutely. So I think when I see the young people, their values have really been warped. Mm. You are right. I, have, I don't know how many times I would tell whether it's my nieces or, or you know, young girls to say, don't look at me today and think I just got up and become Absolutely. like this. I've worked hard. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of uh, commitment mm. to what mm. you're doing. So I really think as government, together with families, there is a lot of work which needs to be done. Be done. And that brings me to where I'm sitting as mm. the minister who is mm. in charge mm. of women affairs. No, no, I'm coming to that, Honorable. Um, I just came from, he from Nairobi to here. Mm where we interviewed the, the CEO of the National Youth Council yes. in Nairobi, in Kenya. Yeah. They have what they call the Ministry of Youth and Creative Economy. And I actually, this is the first time I'm hearing the word creative economy under the Ministry of Youth. Now here I am, and I'm looking at your portfolio. You are the Minister for Women Affairs, Community, Small and Medium Enterprises Development. Why the linkage of these three, if you like, call it thematic I mean, areas. this is a position I was appointed to by the president right. of this country, yes. His Excellency, Dr. E.D. Monangagwa. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think in his astute leadership, he saw that the responsibility of putting family, community, that is, mm -hmm. putting women empowerment, mm -hmm. because they make more than 52% yeah, sure. of the population. Yeah. In Zimbabwe. And make, in Zimbabwe, that's right. right. And in Africa, as you rightly right. say, it's yeah. about 54%. 54. Yeah. We do have 75% right. youth. And sure. again, out of that youth, 54%. most of them are yeah. Women. Yeah. women. So I think there is really a deliberate move to make sure that we support those who make this economy tick. Mm. When you look at women, issues of women empowerment cannot be ever overemphasized. Absolutely. They're just not issues of human rights. Yes, mm. we do have constitution. Mm. We've got a lot of human mm. rights issues mm. about it. But it's about an economic development Absolutely. issue. And this has been proven everywhere where we go. Mm. So when we talk of community development, those women are in the communities. So this is the ministry which is again looking at how can we develop those economies, the communities? How do we empower them? Mm. So that at least they also 
participate actively in the economic activities mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. So this is where it is uh, the key. In this country, yes. Dr. Tun, yes. SMEs, that is small and medium enterprises, right. they are the pulse of this economy. Of the economy. They are bringing more than 60% to the GDP of this country. Right. Every Zimbabwean today, I know you have heard so many things about Zimbabwe, mm. Mm. but I'm happy you are here yes. in Zimbabwe. And I must say And that I hope you get an yeah, opportunity uh, to yeah, meet. Yeah. Yeah. We, sanctions were imposed on us. And I was going to say that I, I think the Western media has not been fair no, to Zimbabwe. Absolutely. I mean, walking in and seeing what I'm seeing in, in Zimbabwe, yeah. and I'm wondering, where do we get all these negative stories from? Absolutely. The, not only did the, the, do they hate us or mm. they want us to remain unempowered, yes. but they actually think colonial, neo-colonialism mm. can actually be brought back. Mm. One thing for sure, Zimbabwe is a very rich country. Absolutely. We are very rich in terms of mineral resources. Mm -hmm. We are very rich in terms of human resources. Mm -hmm. We are rich even our principles, which they have continuously, continuously trying to divide us yeah. and rule us. Yeah. Yeah. Because our values are the ones which took us to Monomotapa. Mm. This is the house of stones, which you have, if you have read the history mm. of this country, mm. where gold was traded mm. long before yeah. colonialism, yeah. Yeah. where our people were already building mm. strong mm. infrastructure mm. out of stone. Right. So that shows that they were using steel, you know, to build mm. strong mm. infrastructure. Mm. This is what we, where we are going mm. as a country. Mm. Independence didn't come easy in this mm. country, I mm. told you. Sure. It was not on a platter. Mm. We fought for it. Mm. The British, the former colonizers, mm. didn't want to leave. Mm. And obviously, they couldn't uh, fight. We were the biggest uh, in terms of population. Mm. I mean, one, t one time, everyone was a soldier in this country. Mm. Because what we did, those who went outside, we realized that we can't achieve independence without involving Absolutely. those who were back at mm. home. Mm. So I salute the population of this country because those from uh, in the rear and those who were right mm. in here mm. fought hard to gain our independence. It became unbearable for the enemy, despite the fact that they had everything, helicopters, they could even bring uh, uh, soldiers from all over the place, uh, mercenaries. I mean, they had everything. Mm. We didn't have anything. Mm. We didn't have much. Mm. We had our minds. Our mindset was right. Mm. And this is the mindset which mm. I hope can go back to the young generation of this country. Absolutely. To say, look, where did we come from? Mm. Mistakes were made, mm. Dr. Tumi. Mm. We didn't write stories mm. about the, where we came from. Mm. And I think this is the problem of all Absolutely. African yes. countries. countries. You know, the narration is, narration is orally. People with different analysis. Different analysis. Yes. Not much has been written. Yes. And right after independence, this is 1980, mm. we can't even justify. I think that was a disservice to the Absolutely. people of this country. Absolutely. And I, I, I am included. Mm. And each time when I, I, I go for a funeral of a war veteran, mm. I say, gosh, this is the history of this country being banned. Bent. And the young generation, where? They don't know they, anything about they it. They don't know There's anything. a disconnect. There's a disconnect. Yeah. And I think where I'm sitting again, there's need for engagements so that we can close that intergenerational Absolutely. gap. Absolutely. There are people who, when they look at me and I say, I was, I was a soldier, I was in the bush, I lived in the bush for five years, I had no food, I had malnourished, they would look at me and laugh and say, that's not true. That's not true. And this is the history which we need to talk Absolutely. about. We need to make our younger generation know where, where they came come from. from. It's only when you know where you came from, yeah. that you can know yeah. where you are absolutely, and you know where you want to go. Absolutely. So it's about hard work. Mm. These values which have all of a sudden come, especially with the advent of social media, mm. Mm. where people, one, hopes, one just wants to get up mm. rich, mm. driving a good car, mm. Uh, mm. dressing up mm. well, living in a big car mm. house, mm. without working for it. Mm. 
There's nothing called mm. miracles. No. Nothing is gotten free of charge. Anyway, no free of charge. Yeah. It's hard work yeah. pays. Yeah. And I think that's what we mm. need to instill mm. back into our young people mm. that you need. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. I think we fought the war of liberating mm. ourselves. Mm. But I think we need now to fight a war of liberating the young people Absolutely. mindset. Absolutely. A war of the mind. Absolutely. So that we love ourselves. Yeah. There's been a lot of divide and rule. Mm. Mm. There's a lot of effort being put in this country mm. to polarize. You belong to this group, you yeah. belong to that yeah. group, you belong to yeah. the... It's not yeah. necessary. Which has been the, the tactics of the enemy for, for centuries. For centuries. Know. We need to do that. So, but you're, you're, you're honorable. My, the, the other issue I wanted to ask. I mean, I have a better picture why the ministry is linked to community development and small and medium enterprises development, which is key. Mm. But you would agree with me that in Africa, majority of our SMEs are largely stuck in the informal economy. And true, you are so right. So in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and listening to you, I like the enthusiasm, I like the passion, and with your background, the commitment, I can see that. What are you doing to not only empower them, but also to lift them gradually into the formal economy? And you know, when they become members of the formal economy, both the government and the society, they benefit through taxation and all of those things. So what are you doing? Tell Do us the program. Dr. Doctor to me. Yes. As somebody who went to school, I've got a master's in business administration. Great. From America. I right. learned from the capitalist truly. Sure. <laughs> and I must say, all industries, we, the intention is to make them grow Absolutely. and become formal. Sure. We can't develop to the levels where we want at an informal level. Absolutely. So the mandate of my ministry mm -hmm is to make sure that we empower women, because we say there are more of those SMEs. Good. Is the, to empower young people, because mm. we know the percentage of young people mm -hmm. is very high. Absolutely. And if we don't empower them today, mm. you can't expect this country to be a great country mm -hmm. and achieve the vision 2030. Right. So we are saying, what is that they, we need to do? We look at women empowerment mm -hmm. first. What has kept women behind? Absolutely. In this country, mm -hmm. before independence, mm -hmm. women were oppressed maybe three times. Mm -hmm. Oppressed in their home. Mm -hmm. Fathers would not dare send a girl child to school. <laughs> yeah. The little money they yeah. had, they would yeah. rather concentrate yeah. sending a boy yeah. child. Yeah. Yeah. So already girls were oppressed in their mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. Then in their communities, you go to school, but when you are working, you are given an, an equal pay. Mm -hmm a male counterpart to yours who get more mm. than what, and yet mm. you're doing the same mm. job. Yeah. And then there was the colonial yeah. oppression. Sure. And so what independence did mm. was to liberate the women. Mm. And the policies of this government from mm. independence was mm. to make sure that we empower the girl child. Mm. Deliberate policies have been put from the day one to make sure that girl children go to school. Right. And I must say, that is real. We've seen the benefits and they are really pleasing mm. because a lot of girls have gone to school in this country. Yeah. When we talk of women empowerment, when we talk of gender equality in this country, mm. it's not about just having a woman, but having a woman on merit. We have qualified engineers, we have got qualified doctors, we have qualified lawyers. And, no, and it's not surprising that we do have, in the history of this country, the attorney general of this country is a woman. Wonderful. And the prosecutor general of this country is a so, woman. Right. And so we are saying we, have, we were one of the first in Africa to have a vice president of a woman. And we are saying it can be done. It's really a mindset. Absolutely. And so what we are saying is there is no leader who would move with an agenda of developing a country mm -hmm. leaving behind 52% of the population. Absolutely. So our job is to mm -hmm. make sure we empower them. Mm -hmm. So from... You just don't start from, you have to go down mm. and understand mm. why are the women naturally always behind. Mm. So we're looking at issues of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with those? How do we prevent them? Mm -hmm. And before we even think of preventing, they are already victims. Mm -hmm. How do we help those victims and empower them? Because if we don't deal with gender-based violence, child marriages, already automatically we have put that country below Look, many other absolutely. countries. And nothing is going to move on. Nothing is going to move. Yeah. So our duty here at mm. this ministry, mm. and thanks to the uh, wisdom of mm. our president, Dr. Mm. E.D. Monangagwa, mm. we are given uh, funds to make sure that we start empowering our women from the grassroots level. We have officers mm -hmm. 
I, I have got one of the biggest ministry. Right. As I told you, these are like three ministries mm -hmm. in one. Yeah. So we have got officers from the high, national level all the way to the ward level, which you can call a cell or a village. Hmm. So today I would know what is happening in 1,935 wards of this country. Today, as I sit here as a minister in charge of community development, small and medium enterprise and women empowerment, I would know what is happening in 61 districts mm. of our country. Because the importance, the importance of making sure that we prevent uh, GBV, which is gender-based mm. violence, sure. we, we make sure that we empower women, mm -hmm. it's just not about giving them funding. No. It's about educating them. The re how do you keep the records? Yeah. What is a business? Absolutely. How, what are the business Absolutely. skills you require yeah. Yeah. to be successful? Yeah. And sustainability of all the projects and mm. programs. Mm. For community, we also look at communities and encourage them to come together mm. and start something which is sustainable. Then we come in with the technical advice mm. and the funding, adv mm. the funding assistance. We are very happy also that we have got a number of development partners, UN agencies, CSOs in this country, who have prioritized the issue of gender equality. And the people of this country, despite the fact that what is enshrined in our constitution is not being implemented, mm. our constitution is very clear. Mm. The section 17 and 56 clear about gender equality. Mm -hmm. We we actually, as people of this country, sat for three years putting together our, what we wanted, the mm -hmm. values we wanted to be enshrined in, in what we call our constitution. Mm -hmm. And that constitution of Zimbabwe was uh, endorsed in 2013. Mm. And I happen to have been one of the co-chairs okay. because 25 members of parliament were appointed to spearhead the that drafting people, of... of the drafting and it was people driven mm. because we went out on outreach mm. talking to the people of this country even the traditional leaders, leaders. in this country right even the religious leaders mm. we involved them in in crafting this constitution and understand and make everybody understand the evil mm. of child marriage absolutely the evils of gender-based violence right. so what we are doing and is the evils of women exclusion exactly right all that mm. we need to deal with that mm. so we also need to make sure that if we empower this community mm. if they start for example a piggery a, 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 a community piggery business mm. are we are they able to sell what they are what right. they are producing right if it is women who have come up together mm -hmm. Uh, they are maybe in the manufacturing, sewing mm -hmm. uniforms mm -hmm. for schools. Mm -hmm. Are we able? To, uh, are they able to find a market right. for what they are sewing? Right. So again, our officers move around in these communities and make sure that wherever we have put money, mm. we do monitoring and evaluation mm. for sustainability. So this is what we do as that's a ministry. Good. We don't get enough money. Mm. Of course, that's the biggest challenge. Mm. But we have also always had a budget this year alone we're looking at empowering not less than uh, uh, in terms of clubs mm. because we put we are starting from the grassroots and mm. also to the top mm. and we have levels i talked about women development fund mm. which is which comes to this through this ministry then we have got the community development fund mm. and also for financial inclusion right. we've also come up with a women microfinance bank mm. and mm. the and the target customer there for this bank is women. women and naturally because we are saying women don't have any collateral mm. because of the historical the background. lands are you know so, titled in the name of the man no title mm. and everything belongs to the, the, the to the man mm. the field belongs to the man yeah. the cows yeah. belong to the yeah. man the yeah. pigs the yeah. the, the, yeah. the 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 goats mm. uh, the, the, mm. the sheep mm. everything mm. the children yeah. themselves yes. the woman is yeah. of yeah. so women <laughs> i like that the woman is <laughs> <laughs> yes so so you, we are saying the women's microfinance bank mm. is there now to give these women mm. uh, loans which are collateral to give them economic free empowerment for economic but, empowerment. but honorable you, you see you are able to articulate and champion and spearhead all these projects and formulations and because you are in parliament yes. now when you empower a woman economically and they are not at the discussion table are we not 
taking something away from them. In other words, what I'm trying to find out is how are we empowering our women to be involved in the political processes of our country? If you go to most African countries, only few women are in parliament. Only few men are in major decision-making processes. What is your ministry doing about that? Our ministry, mm. precisely, we realize uh, that we are leading into that Africa Agenda 2063. Right. Which calls for an inclusive society. Great. Where you want everyone to be part and parcel of decision-making position. Right. Decision-making. Mm -hmm. And we are saying, if we leave behind the women, mm -hmm. then we are not moving anywhere Absolutely. Far. In fact, the, the, there's a gentleman in Ghana, uh, mm. he said, if you educate a man, mm. you educate an individual. Yes. But when you educate a woman, you educate a whole family, a whole generation. So I think it tallies with what you are saying. But Doc, this is very uh, common sense. Absolutely. I always say, sometimes people don't want to be realistic. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you move around, whether it's uh, in a village, and you look at the homes, right. and you see how that home is uh, impressive with the fruit trees, you know, modern, uh, yeah. even no matter how poor. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, when you ask, there is a family which lives together mm. harmoniously. Mm. 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 There is development mm. where there is peace. Mm. So once a woman doesn't feel secure in the home, wherever they are married, they would not put all their That's effort on the to table. bring up Absolutely. The, children. the wonderful children mm -hmm. and to develop the home. The, we need to make sure that everybody mm. is... And when we talk of women empowerment, mm. I know there are men who start saying they, this is getting too far. <laughs> we may see a lot of men no. getting out of it. No, no, we are not saying no. that. No. We love our men. Mm. Mm. Our men are my sons. Mm. I'm a mother of four mm. sons, I told mm. you. And your uncles. Our men are my husband, my uncles, my father. Absolutely. Equally the same, when we talk of women empowerment, no man should feel that maybe we are being left out. Mm. Mm. Because the person who is being empowered is your mother, Absolutely. is your sister, mm. is your wife. Mm. And when they get empowered, what do you get? Mm. A prosperous family. Mm. And a prosperous family leads to a prosperous community, Absolutely. which becomes Absolutely. a prosperous country. Absolutely. So these issues which we are talking about, mm. we need to engage everyone on board. Mm -hmm. But practically, we have talked about women empowerment issues yes. as women for a very long time. Right. Maybe from Beijing time. Right. That's what I've come. That we have left. Yeah. But now we want champions, mm -hmm. male he for she champions. Right. We are saying we need more men. Even uh, when I, I left uh, uh, Rwanda yesterday, okay. and one thing when I, which I was impressed about, even the women parliamentary caucus, mm -hmm. which does the advocacy and the lobbying. They have women members of parliament mm. in it. Because mm -hmm. we want Absolutely. everyone to understand the importance of women empowerment. Good. Let it not be a, a no-go area, it's a women area, it's a women mm. issue. No, mm. it is an economic development mm. issue. Wonderful. We have to, mm. to really move mm. with everybody. Mm. So in terms of empowering yes. our women, that's what, that's our, what my I, job as a, as mm -hmm. a, as a parliamentarian, mm -hmm. I've been... A senator since 20, 2008. So wow. that, that's almost that, about. By, that by, by the end of this term, it will be 20 years. Wow. So I, I must say, my job before I even come to the ministry of government, my job in the constituents is to instill confidence in to world. young girls. Absolutely. I move around primary schools, sometimes ECD, <laughs> and say, look, I came from the same background where you are coming from. What is ECD? ECD is before elementary. Bef ah, uh, before, before secondary. Before, before primary. Oh, before primary, okay. Uh, when you are, our children start going to school at three years. Okay, so kindergarten so, and stuff kindergarten, like that. Kindergarten, yeah. Right. Elementary, yeah. Uh, uh, elementary learning, uh, so I think ECD, okay. uh, uh, development, okay. elementary child development. Oh, elementary child development, okay, sure. Mm. So we are saying, it starts from there, mm. working on the mindset of a child. Mm. And this is the place where we are teaching children that the fact that you are a boy doesn't necessarily mean that you can't sweep. And the fact that you are a girl doesn't mean that you can't do mathematics at mm. school. You can mm. be an engineer. Sure. Sure. And, the, and also what thing I teach young girls is to look after their bodies. Absolutely. To respect their Themselves. bodies. <laughs> so that they are not abused. Mm. To know when it is time to run away from whether it's a relative, whether it's a father, mm. uncle, to know when you are not in a safe hands mm. 
This is another thing which we teach our children. Okay. We also, as a ministry, trying to make sure that we start producing locally mm -hmm. sanitary pads. Because mm. as much as the, a lot of people think, oh, that's a no-go area, you can't talk about sanitary pads. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't give young girls sanitary pads, yeah, they you automatically school. you've discriminated yeah, yeah. them. It takes Remember, some... every woman goes through menstruation Mentally. five days in a month. Yeah. And if a girl child doesn't attend school because they are embarrassed, yeah. they are spoiling yeah. their uniform, yeah. Yeah. and they do, they yeah. miss school yeah. five days in yeah. a month, yeah. count yeah. how many days in yeah. a year. Right. And then you can't expect that child, yeah. that girl child, to compete with the boy child. Right. So these are the issues which we are looking at. Empowering them mentally, instilling mentally. confidence. Absolutely. And also, you know, as we carry out our mandates in our positions as political leaders, I never stop thinking that whatever I'm doing, You're I'm a role model. Absolutely. A leader. I'm a leader. And they learn so from your they examples. they learn from what they see. And I always tell my other colleagues, Ministers. members of parliament, councillors, that wherever, whenever you have been elected and you are now sitting on a decision-making position, remember you are not doing it for yourself. Mm. There are a lot of women, young girls looking at you. Mm. And you are a role model. And what is that you are imparting to those who are looking up to you? So that is an important thing. Let me ask this question, because I think I've, I've had it in many, many circles. When women offer themselves for political office and all of that, most of the time, it's the same women who fight against them. I have heard this narrative, Dr. Tumi, mm. and I know it's being perpetuated by male, I'm sorry to say. Okay. The narrative that women bring, uh, they, they always pull each other down. It's not true, eh? It, I haven't it, read it any, happen, that's it, my no, no, it, anyway. It, it that does happen, that. but the person who, I think it's really being pushed down mm. the throats of women. And I've always said, it doesn't help a woman to be alone in a house full of men. Okay. Because the agenda of gender equality, you can't, Talk about without, it alone. Yeah. If you are a clever woman leader and you want the issues of gender equality to get to where we want to get, you need more women. Absolutely. I personally believe that with more smart, intelligent advisors of women around me, I will not fail That's in true. whatever job I do. So I, I, I always try to tell women that let's not be fooled. Mm. And you are right because the people who vote, the a electorate, majority, the majority are women. women yeah. And so when I was the chairperson of the Women Parliamentary Caucus, mm. the, that's one thing I spoke about, that it's important not to just capacitate those who have been elected to that position. Because remember, as a politician, mm. you get elected because you've got yeah. leadership skills yeah. at yeah. that level, yeah. 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 maybe at a very co uh, a grassroots mm -hmm. level. But when they go to parliament, there is need to capacitate them mm. they, they, so that they can carry out the three mandates Absolutely. of being a representative of their people, mm -hmm. being a legislator, putting mm -hmm. together the laws, the laws of the country, mm -hmm. and also oversight mm -hmm. to make sure that they see if the policies are being implemented sure. by the ministries and all the institutions. Right. So those are the issues which are critical. Mm that when members of parliament were elected and mm. we worked a lot towards that. Mm. And I'm very grateful because we worked with a lot of development partners mm. and CSOs in terms of empowering mm. and capacitating mm. women mm. Uh, who were in parliament to make sure that uh, you build the capabilities, uh, the capacities, yeah, they, they can do the job, they cannot just be seen or that we have got 34% in mm. parliament, but mm. we want to Absolutely. hear them. And true to the fact, mm. when they are capacitated mm. women are very good mm. leaders when they know what needs to be done mm. they are very good leaders mm. so we are saying this issue and we are also educating the electorate by the way oh, that's good to make the to make them feel and comfortable to go behind a ballot box <laughs> and put an x on a woman leader they should look at the merit at merit Absolutely. we are not just saying it's a woman but we're saying look at that woman what is that woman ca uh, uh, what is she capable of doing how what is that she has been doing to change your lives because mm. to be a leader to be a politician it's nothing more than just uh, being able to identify 
which challenges the communities mm. are going through. Mm. For example, mm -hmm. what does it mean to be a politician? Mm. Is to know whether your community has got schools. Mm. Are the girl children sure. able to go to school? Mm -hmm. Is to be able to know, is there a clinic in your community? Mm -hmm. Are there roads so that when pregnant mothers need to be rushed to, to, to hospitals, there are ambulances yeah. which can yeah. travel on those Absolutely. roads? Are there bridges? Mm. Do they have water, mm. clean water, mm. so that mothers don't spend a mm. lot of time mm. walking kilometers right. going to fetch uh, water mm. for their children? Mm. These are the issues. Is there enough food? What do we do mm. to empower the, the, the farmer at that level, right. small scale? Right. How do they become self-sufficient? Sure. And I must say, Dr. Tumi, mm. the politicians of this country being led by President E.G. Monangago, mm. we have come up with an agricultural, uh, and a new way of uh, uh, it's agricultural drought proof, mm. where we actually, we have a name for it, which is called Fumbuza, Fumbuza. Fumbuza. Mm. where we have actually taught our families to dig 19 holes this way and 52 holes. That's a a plot, mm. a small plot. And that plot, it will ensure a family of seven of sufficient food for the whole year. And because there's climate proof, you dig a hole, mm. you put manure and mm. everything mm. to preserve mm. the moisture. Mm. And where does, not everybody can buy the seed, mm. not everybody can buy the fertilizer. Mm. The president has actually come up with presidential inputs to give each household a bag of fertilizer, mm. a bag of uh, seed, mm. and a bag, a, and also chemicals to make sure that a family is self-sufficient. And let me tell you, and this across the country, across the country, interesting. And this has made Zimbabwe, which was never the case some six years ago, we are food now sufficient. food sufficient. I mean, I, 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 before this interview, we had a very good, interesting conversation with the UNDP resident director, mm. and the issue of agriculture came mm. in. Mm. that we still find it difficult to understand why Africa cannot feed itself and we have to depend on other... You know. I, I think, again, it needs a vision, mm -hmm. a visionary leader. Right. It needs a visionary leader who can actually drive the proper policies. Mm. And we have seen it happening in our mm. own lives in this right. country. Mm. We have seen Zimbabwe becoming food self-sufficient. Of good. course, we are experiencing this uh, drought, mm. El Nino, of course, mm. but we still have some in the reserve. That's but good. because this is really a very Invest, serious yeah, drought, drought yeah. we will obviously be found mm. maybe looking mm. for food. Mm. But in the history of this country, we were importing wheat for our bread mm. since 2004. Last year, we, since 2004, we're producing like three months consumption of mm. wheat. But last year, we produced 30 months wow. wheat. So that tells you, a year has only 12 wow. months. So if it's 30 months, it means we have so much in reserve. And this is why we are even able to export. Let, let's talk about the Africa continental free trade area. Mm -hmm. Most SMEs in Africa, as we mentioned earlier, are in informal. But majority of them also are driven by women and young people. But I want us to focus on the women today. Mm -hmm. How is your ministry helping women who are entrepreneurs to take advantage of the Africa continental free trade area? How can they trade with their neighboring countries and all of that? And I want you to walk us through what you have done that other countries can also learn from. As a ministry and also as a government, right. we are very happy that there is this after. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing better than, uh, which will bring Africans sure. closer mm -hmm. than this agreement which was signed by all African countries. Mm -hmm. And if we all Africans can take advantage of the market linkages mm -hmm. between our countries, there is need for our women, and we've already started working with women. For example, there's an organization of women which calls themselves uh, women uh, in trade, organization of women in trade, okay. who actually produce good quality products mm. which can be marketed anywhere. And I've traveled all over the world. Mm. Some of the products I've seen our Here SMEs, yes, Here? our SMEs producing, they can be sold in any supermarket or in any shop across the globe. So this is what we're doing. Market linkages is part of our mandate Good. to make sure that whatever you are making, and we have got, we are encouraging our SMEs to attend 
a lot of these uh, exhibitions yeah. outside. Mm. Comesa has come up mm. and we've trained our women mm. in terms of bringing, of making a product, our SMEs, so that your product should be of good quality. Mm. We look up to where we can travel all over Africa and see when you walk into the shop and you see you a see product made, made, made in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe goods yes. all over the place. And we want also our SMEs to attend these exhibitions mm. across the globe mm. so that they learn Knowledge is about benchmarking. Absolutely. Improving your product, you can actually see the other people, what they are making, mm. and you can improve your product. Mm. And exchange of information is very critical. Mm. We want a situation where, as Africans, as a ministry, would like to sign mem MOUs with other countries, uh, member mm. ministries of gender mm. and ministries of SMEs, mm. because it's important to exchange that information, understand what the market in Ghana, what is that they want, mm. so that when we make something to send to Ghana, mm. we send something which is required by Absolutely. the market. Sure. When we send something to West Africa, let it be something which is what they know and mm. what they ex expect mm. in their homes. Mm. So this is what we are doing. We continue to educate. We are going through some capacity building workshops. Mm. Comesa has actually carried out workshops with our SMEs. We continue to send our SMEs. We've sent them to several countries. We want to send some to Ghana, Absolutely. actually. We've yeah. sent to Tanzania. Right. And many other countries That's because good. benchmarking mm. is the best way to go mm. we are not reinventing a wheel no absolutely we well, are just perfecting it yeah you, you talked about the fact that you your women you're empowering them to go on exhibitions and to do you know benchmarking with the different countries but are you aware i mean are you not concerned about the visa restrictions on our own continent how can we talk about free trade without talking about free movement of people when you meet your colleagues at the at cabinet, what, what do you tell them? Because majority of these SMEs are your own babies, They're women. If you want people mm. to trade among each other, right, there's need for accessibility. Absolutely. The fact that today, when I want to go to Ghana, I sometimes end up in Europe yeah. to fly to Ghana. It doesn't make people know each other. Very it's expensive. expensive. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. And then it Time means you are restricting absolutely. accessibility sure. and people of Africa cannot learn from each other. Right. If we have to uh, develop Africa, there's right. need for accessibility so that inter-trade can increase. Sure. There's also need to look at the visa restrictions mm -hmm. because uh, who are we restricting to go to which country? And uh, w there will always be a system which can actually save. Safe those who yeah. are criminals Absolutely. or something. Yeah. But we cannot really put preventative legal frameworks at our borders. Mm. And these MOUs which we are talking about, which we are, would like to sign with a lot of African mm. gender ministries, is to make sure that our women, our SMEs, mm. can travel freely. freely across the borders. These are serious people who are very mm. organized. Mm. And they comply to mm. the to mm. the to the laws of sure. the countries. Sure. The, so there is really need. You know, at one time, everybody felt you can't stop uh, issuing issuance of vis visas mm. to Zimbabwe and South Africa. Mm. When the border was opened, mm. and Zimbabweans are, ju are just are supposed to carry their passports mm. and pass, mm. nothing changed. Right. We continue to see the kind of trade. So this, uh, uh, this uh, belief that mm. when you open the borders mm. for other African mm. countries, mm. then you bring in all the unnecessary mm. Mm. criminals. And even with technology now. With technology. It's, the, the, you can screen. Yeah. So, so Honorable, the screening you're, you're can a cabinet, still continue you're, to go. Yes, but you're a cabinet minister. Mm. Uh, I don't want to believe that you are, you are talking politically. My question is, mm. when would we see free visa for all Africans in Zimbabwe? I think African Union is working towards that. Mm -hmm. Our own presidents are working towards that. Right. I, I'm sure if you followed our president when we met, uh, when we went for the Botswana Zimbabwe uh, Joint Commission, right. uh, the Binational mm. Commission, our two presidents spoke to the effect that Zimbabweans should just cross into, um, they don't even need mm. passport. Right. They just need an ID. ID. Which, tell, which says you are a Zimbabwean. Sure. And for us, as uh, uh, those who are in charge of supporting SMEs, right. that's an extremely mm. uh, big uh, advantage mm. because then we will continue to see a lot of SMEs mm. 
doing, moving Absolutely. from one country to another, sure. selling their wares, mm. and they actually are compliant yeah. to the laws. I, I guess my worry is, this free movement is working perfectly at the regional blocks. Yes. ECOWAS. Well, I'm a Ghanaian. I don't need a visa to go to any of the member, 15 member countries. The same applies to East Africa. SADC is the Sadiq, same. Yeah. But why are we failing to cross the dots across the regional I think blocks? this is why it is important that it is now being talked at uh, Africa Union level. Right. Because it's important. Mm. All African countries. Right. We are one. One right. continent. Absolutely. I lived in China as a diplomat. And I must tell you, because it's a big country, mm. no wonder why they've really leapfrogged sure. to where they are today. Mm. Mm. They've got a bigger market. Right. The, and until we start producing for mm. a bigger market of mm. Africa, mm. even investors from outside, will not, they will not come yeah. and service only the 15 million people. Absolutely. But if you're talking about the big mm. population of Africa, mm. let, uh, uh, if you ask me, SADC, mm. I mean, we have got more than 250 million, million people. people sure. So you can actually have a big mm. investor coming to invest in this mm. area mm. and then knowing that they are saving 250 Absolutely. million people. Absolutely. So there's a lot of advantages. Mm. But inter-trade between Africans will make this continent a great, a continent. great continent. We need to trade among ourselves. Right. We need to look at the challenges which we have. Mm. When, we talk, when we talk of women empowerment mm. issues, mm. the challenges our women are, are facing in the countries, is border. there's no border. Yeah. They're the same. Mm. I have, the at, I have the attended same. the Commission on the Status of Women, which is organized by mm. United Nations, where 100, more than 198 countries, women ministers of gender come. The issues are the same. That's the same. And imagine if we then exchange and benchmark right. how quickly we can, can develop absolutely. our continent, sure. how quickly mm. we can develop our mm. own countries. So the issue of these unnecessary legal frameworks <laughs> will not like get that. us to yeah. our vision 2030. Yeah. No, no, I mean, you are right. I mean, we have gone to the AU. We have had a conversation like yeah. this with the, yeah. uh, His Excellency Albert uh, Muchanga, mm -hmm. yeah. who is the Commissioner for Economic Development, okay. Integration, uh, yeah. uh, tr tr uh, Trade, yes. Minerals and Tourism. Yeah. And he assured us that so far they've started with what we call the laissez yes. for. Business exactly. Ah, All right. So anyway, so he said that they are doing the laissez passer, which they've started with businesses that have operations in about 15 countries. Yes. And that the next phase is the African Union passport, yes. which we are all working towards. So I'm glad that you know Zimbabwe is also in the same. And we're hoping that... And that African passport, yes. believe you me, yes. will develop this economy. Right. Never again mm. our continent will be looked down on. Absolutely. You know, we can't continue to have this divide and rule which right. was done by mm. colonialists no. No. when they went to, no. to, to, to the Berlin Wall but, and uh, <laughs> all the divisions. Yeah. We yeah. don't need yeah. them. We, don't need we them. are the same people. Yeah. Let us learn yeah. from each other. Right. Let us correct ourselves. Mm. And if there are issues among ourselves, we can talk mm. about it as mm. brothers and sisters. Mm. Mm. And this is where the economic empowerment comes, comes from. from. Yeah. And when we start by saying we need our women empowered, mm. you spoke about mm. how are we making sure that we instill that confidence sure. in our in women, women who have been for years mm. been left behind. Mm. In this ministry, we, together with development partners, we are building safe houses, mm. safe markets, mm. because we realize they are gender-based violence victims mm. who need to be looked after. We, no woman would move out of an abusive home if they don't know where to go. Absolutely. Every mother wants to make sure that if they move out, mm. it's just not about going to report to police, mm. but it's about where do I get mm. food for my mm. children? Mm. What do I do about mm. continuing sending mm. my children to mm. school? So the safe markets which we are building in this country, mm. which we would like to replicate in all the districts, and right. that will prevent right. gender-based violence. Now, let me, let, let's take the gender-based violence issue mm. critically, because mm. I think... Zimbabwe is doing quite a lot on gender-based violence to reduce it. Yes. Now, tell us a bit about some of the practical things. You've mentioned some of them. Yes. Because I want other African countries to learn from the example of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So walk us through some of the critical pillars that you've put in place by, under your ministry yes. to reduce gender-based violence and to liberate the you know, women to, do, to, to be who God wants them to be and to be the, the champions of our continent. 
First is getting to the grassroots, Absolutely. dealing with women right at the ward level, mm -hmm. empowering them, funding, but also educating them. Right. And instilling confidence to say you are born with talent. Mm. You can actually nest that talent. Mm. We can help you nest that talent so that you can be the next leader of tomorrow. Right. Making sure that the gender-based violence victims are well secured. Mm. Make, we have built, that's what we, we, what I was talking about, mm. safe markets, safe, chef, 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 safe centers, where a mother who is being abused, whose children are being beaten by a man who comes home drunk, they can actually take the children, and when they get into this place, they will be able to put their children in a crash. Mm. Then the police will talk to them in one place, a one-stop wow. center, wow. where the police will be there. And this the is across the entire country. We are. Uh, we, we are replicating it. We are okay. still processing. Okay. We have one-stop centers in many places, okay. but we would like to have one-stop centers in all okay. our districts Wonderful. so that if we've got the, this gender-based violence victims can then come mm. and we're also building a crash nearby where they can have their children mm. and know that they have their children safe yeah. so they can spend their time selling their wares in the market, making, uh, doing all sorts, and they can also have counselors. Mm. People who talk to them. to them. Remember, if some man or somebody talks, tells you for life that you're stupid, yeah, you true. end up feeling or thinking yeah. you're yeah. stupid. Yeah. So it's counseling is yeah. also a very, yeah. very the psychological, torture. psychological yeah. counseling. Yeah. So we do have all those under one roof. Mm -hmm. We also make sure that if there are perpetrators of the violence, they need to be pen uh, penalized. penalized. They need to go to jail. Right. All these lawyers, they come to this place and talk to them. Mm -hmm. Police Police are there, mm. and also we make sure that uh, they, they we build a beautiful market mm. and help them mm. restart their lives, buy things, sell, mm. so that they continue to put food for so their children. Are these centers also open to men? Because there are other <laughs> men who are abused by women. So, of course, they, are, they may be the minority, but what are you doing about it? But that's, that's maybe on the uh, it's, 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 But most if, important. If you tell me on my mind mm. what I'm thinking right mm. now, <laughs> I think we need to start having men who actually go out talk to couples. That's what I was coming to. That What are you doing well, we about need... educating men and using men also as advocates? We, 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 we actually at the moment have... Uh, I have had visits from groups of men in mm -hmm. my country mm -hmm. who are actually standing in... Is it, which country? Is it Ghana or Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they are actually standing in for men who are being abused too by women. Oh, wow. And when they came here, I said, look, when we say gender-based violence is an evil, we need to deal with. Cut it does it, It's cut across. Absolutely. You know, it's not. It's not a uh, 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 gender-based victim. Is uh, gender-based violence victim is just not a woman. Absolutely. If you are a gender-based violence victim, mm. who will help you? Absolutely. Because we are dealing with gender-based mm. violence, mm. and to this, we as a ministry mm. are really making sure that we increase our male engagement sessions, mm. so that we work. We want to have men who actually go out there, and men who have actually come out of a violence family, a mm. gender-based violence family, who, because we have talked to them and now they have changed, we want them to talk to other men and families, mm. couples. Mm. We want men to be talking to them. Absolutely. The good things about uh, gender cutting across and really mm. bringing mm. economic development, mm. in a, starting from a family right. and then a community. So we want men to be talking about. We want our boys to be actually vouching for their sisters to do mathematics, to say, you know, my sister is an engineer and be proud of That's it. Good. It needs to start from there. That's but good. we also continue to do sessions with the leadership, you know, closing that gap mm. between those who are in decision-making positions mm. and those women who are out down there so that they can understand mm. what kind of challenges. Because mm. it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm here. Mm. I've been a politician mm. that long. I've been doing uh, business also. I'm a business person, by I the way. Tell. And I, I, it, it, there's a lot of challenges. Mm. And sometimes, we, you know, some women say, oh, you want us to suffer more than men. <laughs> I said, well, I've suffered more than men. Right. I've put in more hours yes. into my day, yes. more yes. than my yes. m m men. Yes. But I see the results, they're yeah. good. Yeah. The benefits are very mm. good. Mm. I see my family, mm. I've, I've had to know my children mm. as individuals. Mm. 
I know them, I know their problems, mm. I try to give them time. Mm. It may be a, not a lot of time, right. but it's quality time. Right. I've also taken a lot of my time with my grandchildren because sure. I understand they, yeah. there is something I need to impart to Absolutely. my children and the bonding is important. So that requires to work a little harder. Yes. You, you, I know you have, you have interest in telecommunication yes. and all of that. Yes. Are you worried about the school of thought that ICT is going to take away jobs and what have you? And I'm asking this, con this question within the framework of the youth unemployment. We see all over the country. Uh, yesterday when we arrived and we were driving to our residence, I was telling the driver that African countries are the same. I mean, to a number of African countries and the economic structure is the same. People selling dog chains. And are you worried about these things? And with your background in telecommunication, what must, must the youth be concerned or must our government be concerned? Our governments have got to be concerned. Right. And by being concerned, it means you're moving with the times. Absolutely. You can't draw back the clock. Mm. You know, the developments which are coming, especially, we know that technologies, they are disruptive. Right. As we continue to move, right. I always talk, when I was growing up, a lot of young people mm. used to go to libraries mm -hmm. to read. Mm -hmm. But today, hardly a lot of young people go to the libraries. Mm -hmm. When we were growing up <laughs> with my children, we'd all sit around the table, and when it's news time, we sit uh, around our, in, in our lounge watching TV. But we know with the advent of social media, yeah, yeah. everybody is it's on their there. gadgets. Yeah. And yeah. that show that tells you that we 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 need much more work who needs to be done yeah. to make sure that all that information which we're mm. putting in libraries, mm. all that information which is coming out of television mm. is also put in a, a consumptive yeah. formula right. which can be consumed yeah. by the young yeah. generation. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I've always said that we need to move all our document documents to digital. into digital yeah, from absolutely. analog. Yeah. Because if they remain in analog, mm. then our children continue to feed absolutely. from Facebook, yeah. Twitter, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. all these other, yeah. you know, yeah. because that's the content which yeah. is there. Yeah. So we need to understand as government and as people that consumption pattern of our young generation mm. has mm. totally changed. Mm. And as such, we need to move quickly mm. to make sure that we also mm. put that information mm. in a digital right. formula right. so that our children on their gadget, mm. whether it's a laptop, mm. whether it's a, a smartphone, whether it's a, 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 a desktop, mm. they need to read the right content. I mean, this, this may not fall under your ministry, but I hope that in your next cabinet meeting, the issue of intellectual property right, mm. you may bring it up. Yeah. A lot of young people, particularly young women who are innovative, mm. are come out of creative ideas. But a lot of times, you have people come and say, oh, you know, uh, enterprise uh, quiz and what have you, and then they steal these ideas from these young people and all. I mean, you don't need to respond to it, but I'm saying, if you go to your next cabinet meeting, this is something that perhaps the Attorney General is also a woman. That's exactly what I was you just going to say. Uh -huh. Please. This is, the, 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 this is why we are happy as uh, women in this country. Fantastic. We have a, now Attorney General who is a, a woman. woman. Fantastic. And who has been in this job, she is a lawyer of, uh, you know, great Paris standing. Salance. Yeah, by excellency. And uh, the issues which have been affecting mm. our uh, women, she's very much alert to them and seized with them. So I think these are the issues which we need to do. Because yes, people get worried, mm. young people get worried. Absolutely. You come up with your idea and the next thing it is stolen, somebody else is uh, In the name adopted. of our fund it and then, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So this yeah. is uh, inter cool. issues of intellectual property property is important. Honorable, we're coming to the end of our discussion, but yes. let me raise this issue. And it's an issue that I ask every um, policy person that we meet. We're living on a continent which has 99% of the people as faith-based, either Christian or Muslims. But when it comes to major policy discourses, faith-based institutions are excluded. They only go to them during implementation, like we saw in COVID and what have you. Are you worried that we talk of Agenda 263, we talk about security, prosperity, and these are issues that are, some of them are moral issues, which can best be described or talked about by faith-based leaders. 
Why have we excluded faith-based institutions from our major policy discourses or across the continent, even at the AU level? Well, I must say, as a country, the, my, my president has got a lot of wisdom. Fantastic. We have not excluded faith-based organizations. We move with them. Wonderful. Uh, and we are very clear by, uh, for, uh, when we say uh, Agenda 26, 2060, uh, yeah, it's actually calling for an inclusive society. Right. And you are actually looking at uh, even gender issues, which we are talking about. Right. But that cuts across. We are looking at a society which is inclusive, inclusive, bringing everyone, whether it's your ethnicity beliefs, your political beliefs, your religious beliefs, but all people should come together. And this is what we are working towards. For your own information in this country, our president hardly goes three months without calling all different religious uh, leaders to his uh, to state house hmm. to consult to hear them to and we at the moment we are confronted with a very serious problem in our country hmm. uh, where the young people are engaging in this substance abuse hmm. uh, drugs and uh, for us to be able to fight that war because it is really a war right. we have brought all stakeholders religious leaders involved. Mm, that's good. And even traditional leaders. When you leaders. said that every yeah. three months, the president, I thought yes. we were going to say to pray, but to consult them. To, to hear from that's them. It, that's yes. that's, that's very, very inspiring. Them. Yes. That's very inspiring. It's, it is very important. You can't leave behind. They are the custodians of the people. Absolutely. If you want to bring harmony among communities, if you want to bring uh, development, as I say, mm. I say this again and again, mm. Development only comes where there's peace. Absolutely. We need peace. And for us to have peace, it's important to, to bring, bring everybody on board. Right. We have got a saying, and my president's mantra mm. says we don't have to leave anyone. Say it in the local and then explain it in the English. Um, okay. Okay. Meaning we don't have to leave anyone behind or any place as we develop our country. And also there is uh, our president's mantra, which says, Nika, Inovakwa, Neve Nevayu. Meaning this Zimbabwe needs Zimbabweans to be built. Absolutely. It can't be built, built by anybody, anybody else. else. Wonderful. Honorable. And to that effect, actually, our president also adds, that's his mantra, Nika. That it is us Zimbabweans who can pray for ourselves. Absolutely. And and from that last statement, it is us. I would say it is us Africans yes. who can pray for ourselves. Exactly. And feel our own pain. Yes. And therefore come up with the solutions to yes. it. That's your camera, honorable. We've had a very very exhaustive and interesting conversation. Yes. You are leading a ministry that potentially can make or break yes. this country. And I believe it. And this podcast is watched by thousands and millions across the continent. By 2063, we say that the Africa we want, the Zimbabwe we want. If you look in that camera and somebody on the street asks you, Madam, what legacy would you want to leave for the youth, the women of Zimbabwe, the women of Africa? How would you want the Honorable Monica, uh, let me pronounce it with the Honorable Monica Musangwa to be remembered? When, and you see, when we're talking, talk about the fact that the seat is not you. You leave it behind. Mm. Of course, you've been mm. in different roles. And everywhere mm. you have left, you've left mm. the seat there. Mm. Mm. Now, when you live there, you've left an impact on those people. In the next 20 years, 20, 20, 2063 years, 2030, whatever, how would you want to be remembered? Thank you very much. I would like to be remembered as somebody who touched people's hearts, who changed people's minds. As I said, we are fighting a mindset we are in a, in a country where we need to deal with drug abuse and substance abuse. We want our youth to go back to basics. We want our youth to have pride in our country, in their country. We want our youth to believe in Africa. 
We want our people to be able to trade among ourselves. We want, we want Africa to grow and to be respected because we deserve to be respected. We have the biggest population. We've got the biggest dividend. We've got the biggest population of young people. We have the mineral resources, which a lot of other countries don't have, other continents don't have. And I'm saying to any investor who is worth his salt or her salt, Africa is a place for them to come and invest. So we need to be ready to receive big investors in our countries. But for us to benefit from those investments, we need to work hard and know who we are and know what we want. What is that we want to get from that what God gave us? The mineral resources. To educate ourselves so that we have enough human resources, skills to handle those resources. It's not about investors coming in the country and sit back and watch them. It's about making sure you know what you want as Africa and what is our access between ourselves. Even we need to increase tourism. We need to increase flights among African countries. We should be able to access each other's countries easily. And so I'm glad when our leaders at Africa Union start talking about coming up with an African passport, that will make Africa great. And we have no reason not to be great. As I said, we have got the biggest dividend. Most of the youngest people are in Africa. And so it means generations to come. No investor will inv invest where there are no young, dynamic people. And they know in Africa we have the youth who are dynamic, who are skilled, who are ready to take up this continent to another level. This has been the Honorable Minister Monica Muchwangwa, the Minister for Women Affairs, Community, Small and Medium Scale Enterprises in the Republic of Zimbabwe. We are right in her office in Harare. If you have any question, please feel free to let us know. If we need, if we need to come back to do a follow-up, the Honorable Minister is open yes. and she's willing to answer them. Let's hear your feedback. Let us know what you think and what questions you have in your mind. Remember, we are all doing this because of the Africa we want. Like she said, nobody anywhere, on the, anywhere in the world can make the Zimbabwe we want, the Africa we want. It all depends on us. And like she has said again, we all need to work together and integrate properly to ensure that we create the Africa that all of us want. Please, let's hear from you and let's know what you think about this. Thank you so much. Honorable. The yes, last thing I'm going to ask you to say, yes. I know you've said a lot before we do one last thing, is, and this is my personal question, how many women would who want to have raised to be like you by the next 20 years, statistically? If we commit ourselves, it's always mind over matter. Right. If we commit ourselves, I, I, I'm not, there's nothing special about me. Uh, I, I just know that I had a wonderful mother right. who brought me to love other people, to respect other people, to know that we are born different. Absolutely. There are some who are smarter, there are some who are not, but it doesn't mean you look down upon them. They, to just learn, to be ready, have an open-minded, uh, let ideas flow. Mm. Open when you are in positions of power, open your doors for ideas. Like I always say, yes, today I'm the minister in charge of women empowerment, SMEs, and community development. But it doesn't necessarily mean that all the expertise to develop this, this, uh, the, this or rather to, to carry out this mandate, it doesn't reside in this ministry. So there are people out there. So we continue to keep our doors open. We want to learn from other people. And this is why I'm saying, if we can learn from each other as Africa, then Africa will grow. Africa will never be looked down upon. Africa, Africa needs you. Needs you.